Hello everyone. I welcome you all to Be and Beyond, a talk show by ICVC, which takes you through the journeys of alpha geeks from all around the world, where they share with us their experiences and expertise in the top tier fields of technology and science. I am Avantika Narvekar, your host for this episode. Today we have with us Mr. Varun Gokhale, one of the prominent alumni of ICVC, who has completed his BE in electronics. He is currently pursuing an MS. in nanotechnology from purdue university he has been an author and presenter at the international astronautical federation he is also a team member of space generation advisory councils small satellite group and a student affiliate of royal aeronautical society hello sir first of all thank you so much for agreeing to do this amid your busy schedule and thank you so much for joining us thank you it's my pleasure to be back at vesse Thank you so much, sir. So let's get started with the questions. Uh, so uh, me, being a student at Vesit currently, would like to know your experience at Vesit. Okay, so my experience at Vesit is probably of two years, not more than that, because as you all know, uh, Corona hit the two years of education of bachelors. So the first year and almost three fourth of my second year and last. Four months of my final year, so that was all. I was at the campus, but uh, overall, yeah. Vesit was a very good experience. Uh, probably, it gave me a lot of opportunities to uh, venture out and try different things, move out of my comfort zone, uh, be in good, uh, be in good touch with your professors. That probably matters the most, and having fun with your friends. That's all matters. That's quite true. Uh, so, uh, as you are currently pursuing MS in nanotech, could you please elaborate on this field of engineering and what made you select this as your masters? Okay, uh, so basically, I'm doing my masters in engineering technology uh, that comes under the Polytechnic Institute at Purdue. So we have a separate uh, we have separate subsections into every discipline. So nanotechnology was my area of interest. and uh, during the second year of my engineering i got into uh, uh, pro- project presentation competitions or paper presentation competitions where uh, we had to do uh, paper presentation on upcoming topics or uh, trending uh, topics in the industry so nanotechnology was one among them and then eventually that made me do more interesting things and trying to research out more avenues in nanotechnology and what all can be done okay so that's quite informative uh, what is the current scope and what are the job roles offered in nanotechnology okay so there are a lot of fields uh, uh, it, nanotechnology as such is a very broad field so you have uh, bio nanotechnology that goes in you have the semiconductor industry that currently depends on nanotechnology uh, you know that uh, now during the recent apple 14 launch apple just announced that you have 13 billion transistors uh, going on to a single chip so that is something where you try to scale down things and go into the nano tech perspective of dealing with things so you have a lot of scope if you are very much into semiconductor manufacturing or uh, chip manufacturing or if you want to do the biomedical side of it where you want to do di- make biosensors that could just penetrate uh, penetrate through your skin and uh provide vitals or could do drug delivery so and it can uh, it has a farther scope where you can use it for space applications or for nuclear engineering something like that okay so that was quite that is quite interesting so uh purdue university has been ranked in top 100 graduate institutions in the world so what are some of the academic aspects that a student needs to fulfill and what's the process to get into top universities and like what one should keep in mind while selecting okay uh, so i usually uh, use three three topics that you should consider that what is your area of interest uh, basically you first figure out what your area of interest lies in so if if you are into engineering but you still love doing something in, on the art perspective so your area of interest should be art rather than just continuing doing an engineering uh, 
doing a masters in engineering so it's just way so first uh, figure out your area of interest once you have your area of interest then you can narrow down on your universities like it gives you a even much uh, narrower perspective of uh, what all universities are there in the top 100 or top 10000 but then again it comes to the course outcomes of that a particular uh, course that the university offers so whether it be a low ranked university it it will be far good uh, if their course outcomes are pretty much better than the ones that are ranked very higher so you first select your area of interest then you narrow it down to your uh, university course outcomes and then you finally take a decision on whether you want to do it in the uk or the us again it's a very popular choice that people uh, like coming down to the us just because you get a higher pay scale once you graduate but that is the fact uh, if you like want to do thorough research and you want to go into the research side of uh edge like research side of work then i think you should prefer europe otherwise us is your best bet and that will never disappoint you that's true also uh, would you like to share some projects or internships that help you have an edge in selection okay uh, so Uh, as per uh, from what i heard from professors here at purdue the selection criteria is pretty straightforward so you have your resume is your essay is your transcripts your recommendation letters all go in and you have a graduate committee from every department that you apply to there is a team of five professors who like scan your profiles and they rate you depending on uh, how your profile is valued so it is not only uh, academic but it is also uh, extra curricular that also is in, involved or is taken in, into consideration when you are applying to a foreign university so i think you should uh, try doing projects not not you should not be very hungry for projects that you keep on doing projects 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 just for the sake of getting into a university but it should be of your liking rather than just a forced upon project so even your just doing a be project can help you uh, it's not mandatory that you need to take up additional projects to get into one uh you can do a tad bit of research if you are interested in otherwise you can team up with a few bunch of uh intelligent people around campus and uh help them in a few projects even if you do the literature survey you you are good to go like you get your name in the project so that is all matters if you want the quickest way to get into Uh, that's true for sure uh, so speaking from the financial point of view what are the total expenses one should keep in mind when selecting a two year ms course in the us and is there any criteria for getting a scholarship or how one can avail that okay uh, so the first thing is that when you uh, select a couple of universities that you are applying to uh, and you usually apply them uh, apply for them before the deadline you the universities usually offer you uh, scholarship options in their application form uh, that you can fill out and uh, maybe you might get uh, get lucky and you might get into a land a full tuition waiver scholarship but if you don't get that part uh, there are on campus jobs that you can do to somehow uh, settle for your expenses monthly expenses that is your rent your food and groceries that's it like i don't think there are any other expenses that i have currently apart from enjoying with friends uh, those are some expenses but and then uh, if you are very much keen on doing a free uh, education free masters in anywhere in foreign so once you apply or just before you apply uh, go through the uh, department profile or the uh, course profile of the particular course that you are applying to see what who are all the professors who teach the course or uh, who are uh, into that course and uh, what you do is you put up personal emails to them that your research interest match matches with theirs and if they could offer you a research assistantship that is what you call here or a teaching assistantship uh, so either you could request them for a ra or a ta depending on your research so they might have an interview with you uh, just uh, an informal one just to gauge uh, how knowledgeable you are or how interested you are basically and uh, then they the the research assistantship gives you basically an edge over others that it waives off your tuition fees 
and uh, apart from that you get a monthly salary so it covers all your monthly expenses so that is one more option you can look out for also you mentioned about student jobs over there so how easy it is to get jobs for students in of indian origin over there okay uh, so the university jobs that i'm talking about usually uh, have admin roles or you have a uh, dining roles or proctoring roles you basically do invigilation work for which you get paid like if you invigilate for one hour you get 15 dollars that is more than sufficient like you just have to invigilate roam around the class just looking whether students are copying or not and keep a watch on them you get 15 dollars i do a role of a proctor so i know how it is and apart from that there are dining jobs that give you 12 dollars an hour so they are basically shift based so you work for 3 hours a shift or six hours for two shifts or something like that 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 are the job opportunities and anything apart from uh, government related you can apply to any private company you want here because uh, here in uh, purdue what i have observed is that every month they have a career fair like every other department in the university conducts career fairs so you can literally walk into any department's career fair and apply to the company of your choice you can have your resume is printed you can hand it over to them and say that you have an interest in joining the company so then they schedule aptitude tests and interviews uh, to proceed further with your uh, but usually it is up to internships not offering a full time role the full time role depends on your how well you perform in your internships that can lead you to a full time role okay sir also uh, you are an active student member of the space generation advisory council and royal aeronautical society would you please tell us more about it and the field of aeronautics and space science okay so the space generation advisory council is kind of a non profit organization uh, it's it is not a startup but it's now an established uh, organization i would say and it is basically kind of a research forum where you have uh, researchers from all across the world coming together under one roof uh, you have various other topics to research upon like the one that i have mentioned is the small satellites group so there is something called near earth objects and there are uh, many other groups like bio bio side of it uh, biology side of uh, space research and all that it is an interesting field to work on and uh, space generation advisory council and the royal aeronautical societies are basically societies like isa or iste something like that so here uh, you have a group of you have researchers and groups of students from all around the world uh, coming under one roof and uh, trying to share and uh, do research uh, across the world across the globe on various different topics related to space like you have space farming or you have uh, extraterrestrial objects near earth objects and so uh, this is something like a research forum uh, or something like a community research community where you can uh, share your ideas and later you form groups with uh, other people from across the world and uh, do research on a particular topic and you submit it into conferences and your research gets published you don't need any a uh, separate uh, authentication that you are part of a university or something like that okay so that sounds quite interesting so uh, also we have published a research paper titled nano fluid based active thermal control system for spacecrafts which you presented at the global space exploration conference in russia so could you please give an insight of the research project you did in terms of its uniqueness okay so uh, the nano fluid based active thermal control system for space crafts is a project uh, that was assigned to us by a, a startup that we were working with as interns as research interns so so it was a project that was given to us and the work that we did was that during uh, re entry into earth's orbit the spacecraft experiences a high amount of force and then your system starts to burn up or system starts to heat up and it heats up to more than uh, 800 to 1000 degree celsius uh, your entire spacecraft is almost like burning and you need something to regulate that heat in order to bring back your spacecraft in its good condition so that you can reuse it at later stages so we were touted of 
trying to use nano fluids which might reduce uh, the temperature to a very significant level but the research later proved that uh, it is pretty uh, not very significant it just gives you a temperature reduction of just minus or just 0 0.6 degrees which is of literally of no use because when you are dealing with temperatures around 800 degrees celsius 0 degrees celsius with 0.6 degrees celsius does not make sense in any way so it was a conclusive research uh, nasa had uh, done a uh, research on similar grounds probably six years ago and they also had similar views on the same and uh, we also concluded with the nasa's paper citing the nasa's paper on the thing yeah okay sir uh, so as an enthusiast many of us look up to the internet to learn or explore about a thing we heard of or want to know more about a domain or something new. So what are the things you look up to? It can be some YouTube channels or podcasts or Reddit communities or some newsletters which are trending these days. Would you like to share your topics from them in the field of tech? Okay, so um, I follow Intel. You can follow Intel's videos. They are uh, pretty, pretty much very informative. Like if you are wanting to go into the semiconductor industry recently, uh, I don't remember the name of the YouTube channel, but there is this one YouTube channel that uh, has these small uh, insights on technology, the upcoming technology or the technology that is still yet to be uh, coming into uh, public domain. So uh, this uh, particular YouTuber makes short videos of around five to six minutes explaining how the technology works and uh, what is behind the technology, what all research has been done. So a YouTube channel like that is uh, amazing. It's fantastic. OK, sir, we will we will surely check this out. So coming now to the last question. So what would be your message to the students? And can you share some of the valuable lessons from your life so far? OK, so. Uh, I think uh, students can look up to doing masters uh, if they are not wanting to end up uh, in low paying campus jobs. As long as they are happy with the low paying campus jobs, uh, they are good to go. But if they don't want the same low paying or the average paying campus jobs, they can surely look up to uh, masters as one option because uh, it not only gives you an edge over uh, the others who are getting into the job sector, but it also gives you a, a better understanding of how the industry works when you do it in a specialized uh, sector. So even if you're like doing computer science and you get into the neural networks or deep learning mm -hmm. or machine learning and AI, something like that, where you are channelizing yourself to work in a particular field. So it gives you an edge over other than obviously you get paid a lot uh, once you graduate from a good institution. So I think you should try out for masters. Uh, and uh, india might not be the best place but uh, india is also one place where you could you could do your masters i'm not denying the fact but uh, only thing is the technological advancements and the amount of opportunities that you get abroad are pretty much insane uh, compared to those that you get in india because finally in india you might land up doing a phd and settling for a professor's role eventually if if you don't uh, get into a very good uh, company after your masters so that's just it. And so you can come to foreign. It is a better option. And then you can return back to India if you uh, have such a technology that you wish to uh, do a business in or start a small startup that could gain boundaries in, uh, like gain leaps in India. So you can do that. OK, sir. So sir, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule and being a part of BE and Beyond. I'm sure that just audience has been definitely inspired by your journey and experiences and the people watching this are going to be delighted by your guidance today. Thank you so much. For more such videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.